Welcome to Mod 3 Style. Today we are on episode number two of our Learn to Sew series. If you've already watched episode number one, you are now ready to sew with actual thread on actual fabric. We're going to start by learning how to change our needle and then we're going to thread our machine. Let's do it. Okay, before we start sewing, the first thing we need to do is test and see if our needle is dull. It's actually quite difficult to just see if our needle is dull. The way you can tell a needle is dull is by paying attention with your eyes and your ears. If you see snags on your fabric as you're stitching, there's a really good chance that your needle is dull. If you see skipped stitches, that's probably a needle problem. If you hear your machine working extra hard to pull your needle up and down, that probably means your needle is dull. It actually takes almost twice as much strength for a machine to pull a dull needle as a sharp needle in and out of your fabric. So even though needles are fairly expensive, it's a terrible place to try and save money because it will shorten the life of your machine. So you need to change your machine needle frequently. Let me show you how to do it. It's actually quite easy. This little tool is provided with the Brother machines. You just put it here and twist toward yourself and the needle comes right out. Then you're gonna put your new needle, throw this one away, you're gonna put your new needle the flat part toward the back, right in, lift it up until it stops, hold it with your left hand and tighten it with your right hand. So now we're gonna change the needle on Frank. Frank does not require a tool to change the needle, it's just a knob. You're going to just turn the needle, the knob toward yourself and pull down on the needle till it comes out. Now, let's say this needle is not dull. We can pull out our handy little organizer that I showed you in episode number one, and we'll put that back in. This is a blue stripe, which means it's a size 14. And then I can take a different size and put it in my needle. So just Frank is just the same as with Pam. I'll take the flat part, put it toward the back, hold it up with my left hand until it stops, and tighten it until I feel like it's fairly tight. Now, there are tools that can be used to tighten the Berninas. I would advise you just to tighten it by hand. I did have a student use a tool and tighten it so tight that it broke the shaft of the needle and the top, and I. This machine was down for a while. So just tighten it by hand, and, and my technician said, just tighten them by hand until you feel like it's in there pretty well. All right, so let's talk about thread for just a second. I will put this away. There are two main ways that thread is wound around a spool. Can you see that this thread is cross wound? It has a crisscross action, the way it's, the thread is put on the spool. And this thread right here is just stacked evenly. These two different threads go on different parts of the machine. But quickly, while we're talking about thread, I wanted to tell you that 100% polyester thread is probably some of the strongest thread you can use. It's great, it's kind of considered all-purpose thread. You're gonna to wanna to use it on most projects. However, there is a 100% cotton thread that's great when you're dealing with only cotton. If you're making a 100% cotton quilt or even 100% cotton little nighty that's a bit fragile, the polyester thread might actually be too strong and you might wanna go with the 100% cotton thread. So, we're going to put the cross wound thread on the horizontal spool pin. Now, some machines like Frank have both a horizontal and a vertical spool pin. 
This machine only has a horizontal spool pin. Now, horizontal spool pins are best for cross-wound thread. It sp spins really nice and evenly. When you put it on, you want to make sure that your spool cap has a larger circumference than the top of your spool. Otherwise, there's a chance that your thread can get caught on nicks on your spool pin. You also don't want to shove it on too tightly or it makes it difficult for your spool to turn. Just right about like that, okay? Now stacked spools are best on vertical spool pins. You want to put a little felt circle on this to help it turn. Now what do you do when you only have a horizontal um, spool pin and you have a stacked thread Go ahead and put it on. It, it will probably work just fine. Um, the Brother does come with this little adjustable. You can make your own um, vertical spool pin. This is the bobbin shaft, but I actually find it's better on these machines to put the stacked threads here. I use this when I'm going to use a twin needle, okay, which we're not going to do yet. So we'll put this over here. Now our first step is that we need to thread a bobbin. And as we talked in episode number one, we're going to use plastic on a top loading machine and metal on a front loading machine. So they, they're really similar the way you thread these two machines. For Pam, we're going to take our thread just like it's floss, get it in this little hook. You can hear it click when you've done it right. Then you're gonna come out around this little finger that's sticking here. Now right here's a little bit tricky. We need to come under this little, this little bar and then under the button. That button provides some tension so that our thread will go on nice and smooth. We're going to trim this as soon as I get my scissors. I'm back. Okay, we're going to trim that. We feed it right through one of our holes and set it down. Okay, once you move this over, it takes power from the needle to the bobbin spinner and we're ready to fill it. Now, I always fill my bobbins on a medium speed. I've read that spinning them on too high speed can cause too tight of tension. Your machine will stop on its own once the bobbin is filled. Okay, you can hear it start to slow down. And then we're done. You're gonna push it right back lift it off, and clip your threads. Now, sometimes when you're first learning to do this, what will happen is as you go to fill your bobbin, it gets tangled up underneath this right here. This little bobbin winding shaft, just lift it off, clear it, and put it back on. Okay, and try again. So now it's time to thread our bobbin. We're going to start by removing the bobbin case. You do that by opening, pulling the little latch, and pulling the bobbin case out. You're going to put your thread in on this machine shaped like the number nine. Now, it's important that you refer to your own owner's manual and figure out which way your bobbin goes in. Some go in like a nine, some go in like a P. I know that's like a dyslexic nightmare. You can draw yourself a little picture and put it right on your machine so you always remember which way it goes in. If you get it wrong, it truly affects your machine's ability to sew. It'll, you'll hear it, it'll be a mess. So, on Frank it goes in like a nine. The thread goes into this tiny little crack and you pull it between here. It should hang down on the right side of this little finger. Now, when you lift up this latch, it makes it so your bobbin will not fall out. You can take your latch and you guide it in. There's a little cave that that little finger fits right into. If you get it right, 
you cannot wiggle your bobbin. If your bobbin moves about, it's not snapped in there tight enough. Then you can take your thread and cut it on the little blade right here. Now with Pam, we're going to start by removing the top of our bobbin, which goes like this. You lift that little bar and then pull that plate off. Try not to drop this plate. It is like perfectly camouflaged. It's very difficult to find again. With Pam, it's easy to remember. It's shaped like a P for Pam. It goes in like a P. It's also demonstrated right here and right here on your machine on the top. You can see that diagram. It goes in like a P. We're going to take that thread into the crack here and kind of follow it around. Sometimes it helps to leave one finger on the bobbin so you can kind of make those twisting motions. And there's a blade here to cut it. We're going to take our little top, slip the tab under the metal bar, and snap it back into shape. Now with our bobbins in place, we're ready to thread our spool. So we have our spool on and our spool cap in place. You want to make sure your thread comes underneath the spool pin toward yourself. We're going to pull it just like when we were threading our bobbin. We're going to snap it in place and go under the finger. Now, there's a little bar in here. We kind of want to hug that corner. So we get inside that bar and go down. And then as you see, step number two, it's got some numbers here to help you through this process. And step number three, we're going to come up. Now, before we do step number four, we need a new vocabulary word. And that word is take up lever. It's one of the well-named sewing machine parts. There is a hook inside all machines that takes your thread up and down and up and down. This hook rises and falls with your needle each time it's used. We need to get our thread hooked inside the take-up lever. And in order to do that, we need our needle and our take-up lever to be raised all the way up. Now on Frank, you just, you kind of just figure out how high that is. And on Pam, it has a little bar on the hand wheel that indicates exactly where the highest place for the take up lever is. You're going to move that to the very highest position. And now our take up lever is in a great position for us to hook that thread inside. You need to do it in kind of a, a round motions, exaggerate it if it helps you. Then we go down and ready to get into our needle. There's a little bar here that's almost like flossing your molar. You have to really get in there and snap it in underneath. With Frank, it's a similar process. Once you know how to thread one machine, you know how to thread most. Down and up. Make sure our take up lever is high enough. Hook it in and we're ready behind this little bar and we're ready to thread our needle. Most machines come with an automatic needle threader. You need to start by making sure your needle is all the way up. Then we're going to push down on this little tab which will shoot around the hook right through the eye of the needle. We'll pull our thread over and up and it will pull that thread through the eye and we need to catch it <laughs> and pull it all the way. Okay, now let me show you how to thread your needle in case you do not have an automatic needle threader. It is obviously much easier if you have a little bigger needle. If you're using a size 10, it's hard to get it through that tiny hole. So you always want to start by clipping your thread. Always start with a fresh clip. Even if you've only tried to get it through one time, every time you try, clip it again. I usually put my finger behind the hole of the needle so it helps me to see the shadowing on the needle. And then I take it away right as I get it through. The 
The real trick to threading your needle is to always cutting it fresh each time you try. All right, we are ready to sew. Now that both our bobbins are in place, we need to pull our bobbin thread up to the top first. And that's pretty simple. The way we do it is we hold our thread with our left hand. With our right hand, we turn our hand wheel toward ourselves and go through one full rotation and kind of pull. And there's our bobbin thread. We're going to take both and give them a, you want a pretty good tail and set them toward the back. Same process on Pam. We're going to use our left hand to hold our spool and with our right hand we'll turn our hand wheel toward ourselves until our bobbin thread appears. Sometimes it's a little hard to reach that. We'll pull it out toward the back. Or press our foot back in place. Some machines come unthreaded really easily if you do not pull a long tail. All right, we're gonna put our flatbed attachment on Frank. And we are ready to sew. We will start with a straight stitch, okay? That is stitch number one on Frank and on Pam. Both zero, zero and zero, one are straight stitches. The only difference is the location of the needle at the starting position. On zero, zero, it's left aligned. On zero, one, it's center aligned. So the way we switch is this is the tens digit, this is the ones digit. We just push up the ones digit and you saw how our needle then center aligned, okay? It's really important every time you start and stop stitching to do a back stitch. On Frank, that is this large lever right here. We'll set our needle down. I generally do three stitches forward, then three stitches back. And then you're ready to sew the rest of your line. And on Pam, our back stitch is right here, shaped like an upside down U. We start with three stitches forward, and then we'll do three stitches back. And then you're ready to sew. Now, maybe you have looked at these numbers right here and wondered what they mean. Let's talk about that for a minute. 2.5 means that there, that each stitch is 2.5 millimeters long. You can alter that length by pushing the up or down button. Now, typically we're used to things that are larger and longer to be stronger, but in sewing, the opposite is true. The smaller your stitches are, the stronger they are. If you get stitches that are smaller than two or one and a half, it becomes almost impossible to unpick them. On the opposite end, if you get stitches larger than three and a half, they become weak and easy to snag on things, easy to tear and break. Stitches longer than a four are considered temporary stitches or as sewers refer to them as a baste. You need to have different stitch lengths for different fabrics. A fabric like this is really thick. It's a fleece fabric. Two layers of it are quite thick. A 2.5 stitch would be too small on this. I would do either a three or a three and a half on this thick of a fabric. It's like walking through snow. I know some of you will just have to take my word for this. When you walk through snow, you take larger steps. Whereas with organza, you'd probably want to stitch on a size two stitch. Now with Frank, you adjust the stitch length up and down here. Frank is pre-programmed to have just above a two 
instead of two and a half. I generally start off by making it a little bit longer, but Frank goes up and down like this. Now you can change the position of where the needle begins by moving these arrows side to side. You can see how they alter where the needle starts. You can do the same with Pam. Now it looks like you're adjusting a zigzag, but as long as you are on one of the two straight stitches, which is zero, zero or zero, one, if you push this button, it will change where your needle begins stitching. It won't make your needle zigzag. Now we are ready to sew our straight lines. If you remember from episode number one, you learned how to sew straight on a line. Never feel bad for drawing yourself a line. I have seen every single type of student does exceedingly well when they can follow a line. If you need to draw yourself a line, I usually use a ruler, um, but if you're quite careful, you could maybe go without and draw yourself a line. Another helpful tool is the magnetic seam guide. It can be placed anywhere on the throat plate, on the metal throat plate, and you can adjust it to help you focus on where the edge of your fabric should be. For example, I could put it all the way out here, and as I sew, I will only allow my eyes to watch the edge of my fabric touch my magnetic seam guide. If you don't wanna buy a magnetic seam guide, you can also just pick up these little colorful tabs. This is what I used to use before I got the magnetic seam guide, and I would set it down right where I need my seam allowance to be, and then I will only allow my eyes to watch the edge of my fabric touch the edge of this colorful tab. The last thing you need to know before we do some troubleshooting is a couple other stitches. Stitch number three is kind of shaped like a lightning bolt. Both stitch number two and number three are stretch stitches. Number two is a straight stretch stitch, and number three is kind of a lightning bolt shaped zigzag. It's meant for knit fabrics. Frank also has both of these stitches, almost all sewing machines do. Okay, so you've just started sewing and then you hear this terrible sound and it sounds like you somehow activated a self-destruct button on your sewing machine. What did you do wrong? Here are six troubleshooting guides for you. Six different ways that I frequently see machines threaded incorrectly that will make your machine sound like it's going to self-destruct. Number one, did the thread get caught around the spool pin? Let me show you what I frequently see. I see something like this. I see something like Sometimes the thread gets caught between the spool cap and the end of the thread and it gets wound around like that. That could be one of the big problems. Number two, frequently on Pam, the thread gets caught right here in this little crack, right here. Make sure it's not in there. Your machine, it sounds like it's going to explode when that happens. Number three, on all machines, double check your take-up lever. Has your thread slipped out of your take-up lever? Number four, did you put your bobbin in like a P when it was supposed to be a nine or vice versa? And number five, this would apply just to front-loading machines. Did you get your bobbin placed all the way in or is your bobbin case turned upside down? You have to make sure it's snapped all the way in. And number six is, is your thread wound around your needle? Sometimes I honestly don't know how people do it. My students, they get it wound around their needle so many times I couldn't even do that if I tried, but 
make sure your thread goes directly straight down the front of your needle and into the hole. If it is twisted around your needle, it causes a lot of problem. Remember, sewing machines are kind of like toddlers at dinner time. If things are not exactly, exactly right, you're going to hear about it and it's gonna be ugly. Make sure you thread your machine exactly right and you will sew fabulously. Please join us on episode number three. I'm going to show you how to make a very inexpensive cutting table an awesome space for you to sew on. We're going to talk a little bit about different kinds of fabrics. And I'm gonna teach you about some of my favorite tools. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Hive Channel 5 for streaming us and see you next time.